What's going on guys, Casual Savage here, and in this video I'm going to be reviewing Ace Thinker Screen Grabber Pro. Now just to clear things up, yes this is a sponsored video, however, even though it's sponsored, this is actually a really good software. The company themselves actually said they wanted a one minute video on this software, but after using it, I think it's a really good software and it deserves a lot more exposure. Hence why this video is longer than a minute. And also for those wondering, no, they have not paid me to say anything good about the software. They literally just said, can you review our software? I said yes. So everything in this video is going to be completely honest. But like I said, I am very impressed with this software. So this is how the basic outlook will look. So as you can see up here to the top left, we have start. However, we have this arrow here. And as you can see, we can select from region, full screen. And with full screen, it also picks up my second monitor. Now, I think that's a really good feature. It's really quick to pick which screen you want to record. So, for example, screen one primary screen is my laptop screen. Screen two is my monitor. Something pretty unique here is around mouse. Now, as you'll see on the screen, I'll play some B-roll for you. Around the mouse records anything that is around your mouse so it's like a zoomed in version which i think is a really good feature for those that can't see well and you can also see here these are the different formats you can pick from next we have web camera so of course that brings up your webcam and here we have only audio so that's if you only want to record the audio these are the different formats here now you may have noticed we can't see the video formats so you come over to settings, options, and you come to recording. Now you can see right here, it says show countdown before recording. So when you're recording, a countdown comes up before it actually starts. So it's a nice animation, but some people just want to click record and start recording. And that is completely fine. If you don't want that to show up, of course, just uncheck this. You can have a beep on start recording. This is optional as always. You can have show recording boundary. You can have show recording toolbar, and then you also have these two features here. Next, we move on to the video format. So this actually offers a variety. We have MP4, WMV, AVI, MOV, FLV, and as you can see, even a GIF. So that's a really good feature. So personally, for me, it's going to be MP4 or WMV because that's what I usually record with, and I'm going to keep it at MP4. Now we can also get control of more video settings or recording settings by coming to the advanced video settings. So you can see right here, um, allow to move the recording region while recording. So that's say if you section something out and while you're recording, you want to move it. Well, with that enabled, then you can. So for all the optimized video, we have disable screensaver. We have hide desktop icons, which I think is a really good feature because I know a lot of people who record their screens, they throw everything onto maybe another monitor or into a separate folder. Um, this button right here will just sort all that out for you. We have auto hide the taskbar and we have translucent window enhancement. But then onto the video format, uh, once again, MP4 or all the other formats, but then we get the codec. Now, for me personally, H.264 is the one I will be using. You can pick whatever you want to. And then for the bit rate, uh, it's currently at 8,000, which is pretty high. Uh, me personally, on OBS that I'm recording with right now, I always choose 2,500 because I think that is the best. Frame rate, we can go all the way up to 60 FPS, which is amazing. Um, that's what I currently record with as well. And then for the mode, you can choose balance, quality priority, or performance priority. Personally, I would stick to balance just to stay in the safe side. Now we will be coming back to settings shortly, but next is the audio input. So if you select this, you can see it says system sound. So if this is highlighted or checked, this means it will record your system sound. Then we have volume here. So you can actually choose how loud the uh, system volume will be on the recording, which is really good. We have screenshots, so pretty self-explanatory, taking a screenshot of what is on your screen. And then an amazing thing, you can actually upload directly to YouTube or upload to FTP. Now that is a really good feature because not a lot of programs actually have that. But moving on to the upload settings, you can see you can put in your hostname for the FTP server. And of course, YouTube, you can upload right here. But heading back to the settings now. So once again, settings and options. Let's go through the general settings. So run the program when Windows starts. Personally for me, don't really want that. 
remind me when the program closes you don't really need that either for me minimize to tray during recording i think this is really good so you won't see the icon down here it will be in this part here include cursor and capture definitely a very useful thing because of course um, recording tutorials for me especially i need to make sure you guys can see the cursor and then we have keyboard shortcuts here so you can see the shortcut for start recording is Control f6 however you can completely customize this right here and then we have the output so this is where your file will be saved once it has finished recording if you ever want to change it just simply press this choose folder button right here i will just simply select my desktop and select ok and as you'll see it's now going to be saving on my desktop heading back to the recording tab and we're going to come to the advanced so we've already gone through the advanced video settings however there's also mouse style audio input and temporary folder so the mouse style really good you get control of this so you can animate the mouse clicks so as you can see it's currently set up to when i left click a red color would appear if i right click a blue color will appear and then you can also animate the mouse buttons this is completely optional once again and then there's also the show mouse hotspot now that's basically a circle around your mouse pretty self-explanatory you can choose how big you want it and you can also choose the color as you can see, you can have a variety of colors and even customize it. Next is the audio input settings. So again, self-explanatory, we have the system sound right here. As you can see, speakers, that is picking up, that is my laptop. Samsung, that is my monitor. So I can pick between which one I want to, but I'm gonna keep it at default, which is my laptop. You can choose the audio quality, your standard, low or high. I say stick with standard, it's pretty good as it is, there's no really difference between standard and high. And then we have set the temporary folder. So as you can see, delete temp files when finished recording, and the temp directory is right here for me. So we ran through all the settings, we're pretty much ready to record. So we're going to come back up to the start, um, the region, full screen, um, I'm going to do full screen for this one, and I'm going to select my primary screen. So as soon as I click this, you can see I'm going to be alerted with this. This tells me if I'm ready to record. It reminds me of my hotkeys. Microphone is currently turned off because I'm using it for OBS. Um, I don't want it to mess up the recording. But um, with hotkeys, you can see it reminds us what our hotkeys are, which I think is really useful in case you forget. And then you also have don't show this again. So if you check that and select OK, this will never pop up again. Me, I'm going to keep it because I think it is quite useful. So I'm going to select OK. And as you'll see, three, two, one go i'm now recording um one thing to note uh that's really good about this so you'll notice we have this we have a pause we have a stop we have this right here which is not useful but here we have the volume of the system here we can add our webcam and this is where things get interesting we can edit so if i select this you can see we can draw out a rectangle or square we can draw out an ellipse and I'm not going to go through everything because that will take forever, but I can also draw out um, a straight line, an arrow, we can also use a pen, we can use highlights, we can add some text, we can undo, we can clear. It's just really useful features that I don't think any other software actually has this just yet, which I find is very useful. However, here's the downside to this part. You'll notice when I click it and I want to drag it out, it's extremely laggy. Now, I'm not too sure why. Um, it, it, you can see right there it's super laggy but it does have a lot of potential for example when I show in Sony Vegas tutorials and then I create the zoom effect where the screen pops out and maybe an effect pops out just doing it this way will be so much more simpler I could be recording I could highlight an area to let you guys know where exactly this, this thing is and from there it's going to be much more simpler for you of course, once you're happy, just simply select stop recording. And here you go. You can see right here it is recorded. It recorded to my desktop like we said we wanted it to. If I right click it, we get all these options. I'm going to select play. As you can see, we're just drawing out like that on the recording. And like I did mention, it does lag. You can see it is quite extremely laggy right there. Now, one last thing, um, once you're happy with your video, let's say you want to straight upload it to YouTube. By all means, select upload. If you're not happy, you can delete it. If you want to edit it, 
there's actually an editor built in as well. So if I select this, as you can see, this is how the editor looks. So you can select edit and it's just really basic editing. So you can trim, you can crop, you can change the speed, the volume, contrast, brightness, saturation, etc. And then we also get control of some text if we wanted to add it in and of course subtitles. But this is Ace Thinker Screen Grabber Pro. I want to hear your thoughts on this because in my opinion, this is a really good software. Now, if you want to use it yourself, a link to it will be in the description. <laughs>